Hi, Bill from Polygon here. In this video you'll learn how to use the old industrial brick generator to create the perfect custom brick for your scenes. I'll give a brief overview of the different settings and show you how to get the final material into your 3D software. All the settings I'm going to show you will be the same regardless of where you're using it. Uh, you can open it in a Substance plugin if you're using 3ds Max, Maya or Cinema 4D. Or if you're using software that doesn't have a plugin like Blender, you can just use the generator in Substance Player. Uh, which is where I'm going to be demonstrating it. It's also worth noting that Substance Player is a free download. I'll be sure to include a link to it and the relevant add-ons in the description below. I'll also include a link to the generator itself, uh, which is available on polygon.com. Okay, so the first category of settings we have here are some general settings, most importantly, the resolution of the final textures. Now, by default, this is set to 512, and this is so the viewport updates nice and fast while you're making alterations. We'll increase this number to 4K um, when it's time to export, but for now I'm going to set it to 1024 as that still runs pretty nicely on my particular hardware setup. There's also a random seed value here which will basically create a completely different version uh, of the current material based on the settings below. Next we have global parameters. From here you can choose uh, the workflow, either metallic roughness or specular glossy. Now this is an important one to get right and it will depend on what application you're using. In Blender, for example, it's best to go with metallic roughness um, as that's what the principal shader works best with. However, let's say you're using a uh, Corona renderer, you'd be better off using the specular glossy workflow. Chances are you already know what one works best for your software, um, but if you don't, please feel free to contact us uh, for advice on the subject. Now the rest of the controls in here relate to the general sizing and shape of the bricks. We can adjust the overall material scale, uh, pick between a number of different bond types, which will alter the layout of the bricks. Uh, we can also alter the thickness of the mortar and adjust the rotation and extrusion patterns. Okay, so the next category is where we can start to alter the overall look of the bricks. We can change how aged the bricks uh, are, how rounded off the edges look, how damaged those edges appear, and change up the pattern for how many of the bricks look a little burnt. Next, we can change the color of the bricks to pretty much anything we like, uh, though I'd recommend to make sure you pick a realistic color based off a, a reference image uh, if you're aiming for photorealism. Finally, in the microsurface category, we can adjust the roughness, how shiny the bricks will look. You'll likely want to keep the setting relatively high, and it's worth noting that if you're trying to create a wet, sort of rained on look, uh, that we have a separate control for that, which I'll cover later. Okay, after that, we have some similar controls for mortar. We can adjust both the color and the roughness levels for that separately. Now, finish allows us to add in painted effects to these bricks. Uh, once enabled, uh, um, other sliders appear and we can control the color of the paint, the shininess of the paint itself, uh, which won't affect the separate controls for the bricks underneath, which is important because the next uh, section allows us to control coverage. From here we can choose between a completely painted wall to one where half the paint has been scratched or worn off. Um, you can create some really cool variations here. The age category basically allows us to add in various types of dirt. We can control the general dirt amount as well as add in top and bottom grunge to save having to add that in later. Um, from here we can also add in an overall wetness effect without having to manually adjust all the, all the roughness settings elsewhere. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's a summary of all the controls within the old industrial brick generator. With all these settings there's really a huge amount you can do to generate all sorts of different textures. Now I'm going to quickly cover exporting, uh, so you can take your finished materials and generate a PBR texture set to use in other applications. If you're using a plugin directly in your application rather than Substance Player, you can ignore this part. Now here in these shader settings, we can adjust the normal format. Now depending on your render engine uh, and software, you may want to adjust these. I, 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 for example, use Blender for most of my projects, uh, and for that you'd want OpenGL. So I'm going to set that now. Um, we also have some controls for making overall adjustments to ambient occlusion strength and normal map intensity. Right, before we open up the export window, we need to head right back up to the top of the settings panel and set the resolution to what we want for our exported textures. Uh, I'm going to select 4K and then head over and click on the export as bitmap button. As you can see, this opens up a new window and here we can set up our export. 
By default, all these various texture types are available, but I'm going to disable a few and just export the base color, roughness, normal, and height textures, as they tend to work great in Blender as is. Next, let's head up to the file type. I tend to go with dot tiffs, um, mainly for the extra color depth, uh, and then the only thing left to do is set the export folder. Once everything is set up, simply hit export and your textures will be saved. That's it. From there, you can simply load them into your target application and you're good to go.